Okay. See waiting room. Now I've got people waiting. Okay, so this is the spot right here. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me? Type into the chat if you can hear me. All right, super duper. Okay, so we're going to get started. A little technical difficulties at first, but you know how that goes. We always overcome those. And so, Today is all about stress transformation. So I think there's a couple more people waiting here. Let me let them in and we'll keep admitting everybody in here so they can all join in our little seminar. This is gonna be great tonight. I believe you're all gonna be empowered and find new techniques to deal with your stress, new understanding of what stress actually looks like in your body and in your mind. Yep, docs, we got all, the, they're popping on in here. Getting them all, the doc is checking out, making sure I have my, my, um, cause there's, we've had some little funny, fun little tech, te technical things here with Zoom. It's really been kind of cool. So welcome everybody. First of all, I want to say, I am honored that you joined us tonight. Um, and this is, this is, oh, sorry, just I'm muting someone here that, there we go. Got some noise in the background there. All right. I'm honored that you joined us tonight for this seminar. There's many others that didn't choose to do what you're doing tonight. And I know because you joined us, you are on your own healing journey because you're looking for answers to deal with stress. And first of all, you're realizing you have stress and you have anxiety going on in your body and in your mind and you want to deal with it. That's a huge step ahead. Realization is the first key to undoing the effects of stress and anxiety. So I just want to welcome you here tonight. And I want to thank you for allowing me to share with you. Um, let me get my little, my little um, thing. Tonight, this is a very serious topic. Stress is the biggest killer if you want to know stress a big the biggest killer in our nation stress will weaken everything in your immune system it'll weaken everything in your body and it'll cause you to die early um and we're going to go into that more a little bit later with with why that is and how that looks in the body but i want to tell you i personally got hit with the reality of this just last night of what stress does to a body. I was looking through my our family, my family's all over the country. They live in different states and we have this little chat thing we have on an app on our phones. And I was reading it and I was all of a sudden like, oh, like a knife went into my heart. My sister-in-law who's barely 40 years old has pancreatic cancer. And I shouldn't go into details. Anyway, just say it this way. She has cancer and it's very, very serious. And I, it just, it just got me, it, it hits you at any age. If you don't know what's distressing your body, if you don't know what's stressing your mind, if you don't deal with those things early enough, you have a wake up call that comes. I had it and I'll get into this here in just a second. I'll tell you my story with my wake up call. But my family member now is having a wake up call. And I've had several family members in the past year have wake up calls disease comes from stress in the body that is a hundred percent reason of disease and i'll explain why i say that so firmly and convictedly later but disease comes on silently slowly from so for so many years it's come on and you don't know it's there until the bomb goes off so to speak and as we, as you see on this slide right here you know it is the greatest cause of disease it not only causes death in your body, it ruins your life quality in the meantime. It destroys relationships. I've had multiple patients calling me on the phone asking for to, to become patients here because their marriages are at, at a crisis because of stress. 
stress of a variety of sorts. And again, it can be anything from health issues to emotional issues to environmental issues to work issues. You know, stress is destroying their relationship. Stress is destroying their own peace of mind. Stress is destroying their sleep. And the, uh, the, the, the bottom line is stress will shorten your life. So I'm here tonight, and my goal is that you will leave this webinar tonight more empowered, more informed, and that you will be able to be more happy again. It's probably not good English, but I don't really care. <laughs> I want you to be able to live a happier life and a more fulfilling life as a result of this webinar. Why am I so passionate about this? Why am I even here teaching it? Why is it me teaching this instead of Dr. Legree? He could fully talk on this topic too, but this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I am the living example of stress reversal. I grew up in a family, um, in, a, in a conservative religious family, and there was, there was a, well, I'll just say there was a high level of stress at home. We pretty much walked on eggshells, um, afraid to do anything wrong, um, sometimes afraid to speak. Um, you always, I mean, best behavior, oh my word, we had the best behavior ever. But it was a highly stressful way of growing up. And I was a very tough, tough girl. I could handle a lot. And but the, one of the ways I handled it was by suppressing my emotions. That was the way I dealt with my stressful world. And I'll tell you what, if any of you have, have done that to yourself, it's the best way to kill yourself. Um, and I didn't realize what I was doing to myself because I was a little kid. You don't know what you're even doing by suppressing your emotions or your own thoughts and ideas. But it caught up with me. My Im immune system had started having trouble right from the time I was a child. But, you know, we didn't know what that was. We didn't know what was going on, why I was having constant constipation, why I constantly had ear infections. Um, it started catching up with me in my 20s and 30s when I started catching flus, every flu that came along. By the time I was in my mid-30s, mid 30s, I literally caught every flu that happened to come down the pike. And then I had, I had multiple sports injuries in there. I moved 37 times, talk about stress. I was adding more stress on. Plus, I was building mindset that was stressful. I was building mindsets of lo, lo, low self-esteem and of not being worth a lot and of always being a problem. Things that created more stress in my heart. I created that stress in my heart to deal with my life. It was just a, yeah, just some of the things we do as humans to try and cope. But, um, and if you could just all be careful to keep your phones muted and your com computers and tablets muted, that'd be super. I'll try and keep an eye open here as well. Um, just so we don't have a lot of background noise for the others who are listening. By the age 42, I had my wake up call. I was, I had had an auto accident. And, and after that, they put me on some medication to deal with the pain. And that medication was the tipping point, me over the edge. It was the final stressor on my system. And, I, and I had been dealing with mindset and trying to work on some of that for a while. Emotional things had a bunch of healing with that. But when I had that final physical stressor, it took me over the edge. I had continual diarrhea. I had my energy was going down, down, down to the point of almost no energy. And I had developed a breast lump, a heart condition. Continual migraines, I should say, like like three, four times a week I was having a migraine. Um, oh, what else? My hair was falling out, my skin issues, chronic pain in my back that would not leave even with medication and physical therapy. I was a mess, and I was age 42. And I remember being desperate and saying, God, what can I do? What doctor can help me? I have so many of these crazy things going on. I had a heart condition on top of it all, and I was diabetic. I, I mean... At 42, I was pretty much a basket case of health issues. I realized I was still living in depression. I had gained so much ground. I didn't think I was, but I was still in depression and anxiety like crazy. And the very next day, so I met Dr. Legree, and I, he changed my life so much. And so tonight, what I'm bringing to you is the things I have learned in the last four years of intense stress reversal in my body and in my mind. So I want to equip you tonight to walk powerfully forward into your future. All right, so the, the, um, the thing to realize is, you know, when we think of stress, a lot of times we think it's our environment, it's the people around us, it's the job situation, it's the lack of finances, it's the crazy world we're in, and right now, it's the political situation, it's the COVID, that's what's causing us stress. Well, the reality is, it's not. 
Those are simply situations in which stress is kicked off in our body and in our mind. And I'm going to teach you tonight how to deal with those situations differently, that you can have still have freedom and joy and happiness and health in the middle of nasty situations, okay? Stress comes from lifestyle choices. And we'll go, well, I can, I'll just briefly hit that now because I'm not going to go into it a lot on this particular seminar. There is so much that I'm going to share with you tonight. There's so much more that I could share with you. It'd take all weekend, if, I mean, for like three days if I, had to, if I was going to share this all. So I encourage you to take snapshots of the screen here. Um, feel free to take pictures of it, whatever you want. I'm going to be hitting the top of a lot, the top, you know, icing on the cake, the top things of a lot of key things that will help you. And if you, if you choose to have us support you through your healing journey further, we will continue to pour into you more of how to reverse the stress in your, your body and in your mind. But lifestyle can cause, you know, if you choose to live a lifestyle of high sugar, low exercise, looking at the TV all the time, media, and making that be your digest and your, your diet, you will have a highly stressful life, and there's nothing that I can do to change that. Um, thinking, we're going to get deep into that. It triggers that trigger the stress response in your body. And the third one, the gut-brain issues, the body connection to stress. There's a mind-body connection that's so powerful, and it's so beautiful as well. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm going to get back out of the way here a little bit. We've got a gut-brain connection. Your gut is the beautiful producer of what I call the happy juices. Dopamine, serotonin, and other hormones are produced in the gut, and they go to the brain, and they make you feel happy. They make you enjoy life. They make you enjoy the moments when you're sitting and holding your baby, when you're eating your favorite food. If that dopamine and serotonin is not in your brain, um, you probably don't even enjoy those favorite things anymore. It takes away, people sometimes experience, you know, less libido and different things when they have um, anxiety and stress issues because the happy juices aren't getting to their brain. There's a dysfunction in the gut. There's an obstruction of the bodily function that's keeping those happy juices from getting to the brain. The gut is also what receives the nutrients and the two primary nutrients that your brain wants in powerful amounts is fat, good fats, and water. And most of us don't even get enough of either one of those. So the gut feeds the brain, but we oh, and also out of the brain then, if that brain is healthy and happy and functional, yet that's where all your creativity, your happiness, your success strategies, your, your, your ability to deal with life stressful situations, your inventions, as you, as, if you will, deal your adaptations to a stressful life, those all come out of your healthy brain. But... If your brain is not healthy, that means you're in a freeze for, um, stage. And I'll explain that more as we go along. When your body goes into survival mode and your brain goes into survival mode, that's the fight, flight, or freeze. Some people, when they go into survival mode, they wanna, they're just gonna, they're gonna charge you. If, you. if you trigger them, they're gonna charge you. Other ones are going to run away. And other ones simply get paralyzed and just kind of freeze. And you see this terror in their, in their eyes. You've probably seen people with that. I mean, if you see a snake, you may do one of the three. You know, this was back in the cave days. You know, God created us with this response because, hey, if you had a saber-toothed tiger chasing you right now, you had better have the adrenal response. And I'll go into explain a little more what that adrenal response looks like and what the fight, flight, or freeze is, is in your body. It's a good thing used the right way. But the problem is most of us are living in this stage which what happens to your body when you live in survival, in fight, fight, flight, or freeze. What happens is, I'm going to read to you actually an article here, and I'll show you in a second what that is. You can take a picture of it there if you, if you want. It's not real clear, um, but this is, I'm going to read you what happens. But I first want to go back and just, and we'll, I'll read it to you, and then I'm going to go back and, and recaps, recapsulate what is being damaged in your body when you have the stress, fight or flight or freeze response. So um, the stress, when it seems to be, which seems to be everywhere in our hyper-connected, uber-productive, constantly competitive world, is one of the most important contributors to cognitive decline, people. Here, let me get out of the way so you can take a picture there if you want. 
cognitive decline, short periods of stress that you get over are less of a problem than the chronic unresolved stress that so many of us experience. Activates the HPA axis, that's the hypothalamic, the pituitary adrenal axis. Our brain's HPA axis produces the um, CRF, which is a, oh boy, this is, this is when Doc needs to read this word, cortifer <laughs> releasing factor, sorry, it's a hormone produced by the pituitary gland to produce another hormone into the body. ACTH, which is the other hormone, in turn causes the adrenal glands that are on top of our kidneys to release cortisol and other stress-related hormones. It's like a hormone cocktail that the, ster that the adrenals release when you trigger. And I'll explain triggers a little more later. So those are released from the, the adrenals. If you have high levels of cortisol, they damage neurons, especially in the hippocampus. That's a key of your brain. And if that thing's being damaged, you're going to have all kinds of other issues of function in your organs, brain function, thought function. It's a huge, you do not want to damp damage your um, hippocampus. And so it, that restricts and, and reduces your cognitive and creates cognitive decline or memory decline. Chronic stress can lead to dysfunction of the HPA camp axis. This was once called, was called adrenal fatigue, but in fact, the whole axis, remember that's the hippocampus, the pituitary gland, and the adrenals, that whole axis is out of whack. When this happens, the adrenal glands do not produce enough stress hormones to deal with the stresses that, that are in your life, such as infections, toxins, and lack of sleep. How many of you, can you raise your hands, how many of you have, so have, have had lack of sleep? Like where you just, you just, I have to raise my hand, you know, where you, you want a little more sleep or you wake up and you're just not rested. You're just like, oh man, I could just stay in bed, but no, I'll get up and face the day. You know, we are not really rested. That is a lack of sleep issue and it actually has damage to the body. Well, your adrenals are meant to deal with that, but when they're stressed out, burnt out, they can't. When they're stressed out from stress, they can't help you with stress. You therefore become very sensitive to these stressors such as toxins, infections, or lack of sleep. Today with COVID, you know, we're facing a lot of, of stressors to our system. The COVID virus, you know, if you are stressed out already and your adrenals are stressed out, your body can't fight normal things like COVID viruses or a bill in the mail or a toxin that you ate in the food at the restaurant. You know, your body can't handle that, and so you get sick. I'm very sensitive to these stressors, which can exacerbate cognitive decline. Furthermore, a rapid reduction in cortisol can itself lead to the loss of neurons in the hippocampus. Your neurons in your brain, just for a little bit of, of brain education here, your, your brain has little neurons and it's the little fingers that go out from the cell and they send messages to the next cell. And the next cell catches them, processes them and passes them on to another cell. If those little neurons get damaged, there's no way for the cells to communicate and you're stuck with a dysfunctional brain. So hence your memories start failing, your short-term memory probably first. Um, for most people for short-term memory, you start forgetting things more. And you get irritated, you just, life just starts falling apart. So I'm gonna go back to this and just review here again. So we've got um, the hypocampus, damage, damage, adrenals, adrenals can't function properly. We've got stressed kidneys and the pituitary gland. Now that's serious business. More and more patients are showing up with kidneys in stage three and four uh, failure. That's bad news. That, that's your ticket to going out early, okay? You don't want those kidneys given out. Um, suppressing your immune system. Man, if there's ever a day we need an immune system, it's today. And if, as soon as you kick into fight, flight, or freeze, what happens is you because your body was geared for that when the caveman days and the, and the saber-toothed tiger was chasing you, your body shuts down digestion, shuts down the immune system, shuts down cognitive function, and it, it puts all of its energy into running. 
or fighting this thing. So your normal daily functions that your body needs to survive go away when you're in fight or flight. Bad, bad, it's a bad situation. Constant fight or flight. And we call that a limbic lock. And that can often come also just from stressing, like emotional stresses like I had in the past. You can limbically lock in a fight, flight, or freeze stage where you literally live there. And it takes a lot of disciplined commitment on your part to get out. I'm going to give you some of those tools tonight, and then I'm going to give you some opportunities to actually reverse that damage and get that limbic system on, uh, on stuck and to get your immune system working again and get your pituitary gland and your adrenals and your brain back to full function. So, yeah, kills neurons. It produces cognitive decline, memory loss, and foggy brain. It produces hormone imbalance. Stress massively throws your hormones all crazy. So if you, if you want to blame your partner for being irritable, rational and with, well, take them to, bring them to a good doctor. We would love to meet with them. Let's see what's going on. There's a reason that partner's struggling and it's probably not all in their head. Um, inability to deal with toxins, infections, and lack of sleep. Lack of sleep in and of itself is actually a sign of stress. All right, so we want that. Okay, so let me put it in layman's term. What happens when you trigger? First of all, what is a trigger? Okay, a trigger is something that kicks off that adrenal response, which is when the adrenals fire off a cocktail of hormones and they go up and they hit the heart. The heart shoots, the, the pulls the blood from the arms and the legs into this core. And then later on, about 12 hours later, six hours later, it flushes it back out. So you have these two waves of crazy feelings, honestly. And it deprives process of times. We want to stop the adrenals from firing in unneeded situations. What could trigger your adrenals from firing? Well, if you are afraid of financial problems, if you see an, another bill in that mailbox, it could trigger you. And a way to recognize a trigger, or it could be your child, when you're just, you just want a few more minutes of quietness, you're just sleeping in the morning, you just have a few more minutes, or maybe you lay down for a nap, you, you moms that are doing such an amazing job with your kids. You lay down for a nap, and all of a sudden that child shrieks. What goes through your mind? Oh, my word, i got to get up. You know, that, that immune, uh, that adrenal response, that trigger, causes that spark of, ad of adrenal cocktails to go out through your body, and it starts the adrenal cycle, the fight, flight, or freeze cycle. Kind of a fear cycle, actually. It really is sparked by... Um, when, that, when that trigger goes off, you're going to feel, the way you can recognize the trigger is you're going to feel your muscles tense. You're probably going to start breathing shallow, more shallowly. Your face may go like that and get tense. Um, your, your blood pressure will go up for a lot of people. And some people get flushed in their face and some will just plain get angry. It could, those are some of your signals that your body just did a, did a, had a trigger. And you might not even remember what the trigger was. It doesn't matter. I'm going to teach you what to do when it triggers, okay? So after it triggers, then it goes into a fight, flight, or freeze, and each body chooses its own little way of relating which one it wants to choose. And it might be all three. Or it might be one or the other. And then after the danger passes, you know, after the situation calms down and you mentally calm down, blood back out up to the brain, the, the fluids go back out to their normal places. And that backwash also includes these large amounts of glucose. I don't know if you can read the wording there or not, but it's glucose is dumped back into the bloodstream. Well, okay, if you know anything about sugar, natural or otherwise, it's bad for your immune system. It's bad for, it'll feed infections, it'll feed cancer, it'll cause cancer to grow. Glucose in any form is not a good thing to have high quantities of in your body. And so if you're in a constant fight or flight, you're constantly dumping glucose into your bloodstream. 
So you're setting yourself up for diabetes, for cancer, for, for renal failure, for all kinds of stuff, just simply by being in fight or flight. This is how, why stress is so serious. It's not an optional thing. People live under stress and they think it's okay. It's not okay. It will kill you early. So when you trigger, here's another little picture. You might want to snapshot. This one's kind of cool, I think. So it affects your skin, you know, acne issues can co come from stress and all kinds of things like eczema and dermatitis. Some people just break out instantly when they get stressed out. It's their body's way of telling them, hey, look, something's not right. Stomach, you'll have indigestion issues if we have chronic stress. IBS, cramps. Oh, yeah, ladies, menstrual cramps and terrible, terrible, terrible menstrual cramps. That, you know, we think of right away hormones. Well, yes, but it comes from stress. The whole reproductive system is controlled subconsciously. And so when there's a stress response going on, you are creating incredible tension in the reproductive system. Pancreas, we talked about that. Immune system. Um, your immune system is not going to protect you from the diseases when you're in fight or flight. That's why I was getting flus every day of the week. I mean, every flu that came along, every, every month I would get something else. Your head, of course, the mood, the anger, the cognitive decline, heart issues, blood pressure increases, um, faster heart rate, rate, you're apt, more apt to have heart attacks. Your intestines, oh man, the intestines are our protectors of the toxins we take in through food and otherwise and, and water and stuff. And when those things break down, they can't protect us. We need those intestines, good and healthy and good mucousy. They just, they don't need to be dried out from stress. Your joints and muscles. Did you ever wonder why so many people today have knee issues, back issues, wrist issues? I mean, it seems like every other person's having a knee a knee replacement or hip hip replacement. Seriously, I didn't remember that when I was a kid. We are having such a chronic level of stress in our society that it is breaking down our joints at a rapid rate. And of course, I talk about the reproductive system so much. You know, you have a stressed out couple. The chances of them getting pregnant is less. So let's just move on. Let's find some new tools. Let's get into the positive side. So I'm going to first give you some tra stress transformation and mental toolbox. Again, we're going to deal with this is going to be so much fun. This is where I want you to interact. Please, please, please interact with me there. I would love to see you because we're going to have some fun here. Um, we're going to show you how to, I'm just going to get my little, that way so I can see you guys, because we're going to have some fun here. All right. So I want to teach you some very, very simple ways of when you feel you triggered. Okay. All of us have different triggers. And I want you to be thinking of what are some of the things that trigger me? It'd be really good to make a list as you think about these things. What are some of the things that trigger me? Mine can simply be sometimes another thing on my to-do list. That can get me some days, especially when I'm tired to begin with or something. Um, it could, yeah, it could be that bill in the mail. It could be your child crying. It could be a phone call. If, you're, if you've been stressed, if you got traumatized by a phone call in the past, a phone ringing could, could stress you. Think of a, one or two triggers that you have, and then we're going we're gonna to do some exercises here. So when that trigger goes off, you have literally 10 seconds to stop the adrenal response. Only, only 10 seconds, folks. It's not very many. Only 10. I'll get my hands up there a little higher. Um, but that actually is sufficient time. And the first time you catch this trigger is my, probably going to be a minute or two later. That's okay. Go ahead and do what I'm going to teach you and keep on doing it. And you'll soon catch yourself in that 10 second window and start reversing the stress response from the mind. We're gonna show you how to work the stress down from the mind and from the body up. I'm gonna teach you both ways today and give you, give you t tools to do that both directions. So number one, diaphragmatic breathing. One of you on the questions asked about breathing and Yes, breathing is huge. You want to breathe down into your diaphragm. Now, for most of us ladies especially, we tend to breathe in the upper half of our chest. That is not diaphragmatic breathing. Diaphragmatic breathing is breathing down and it basically makes your stomach go out when you breathe deep. You want that, the diaphragm that's in the very bottom of your rib cage if you want to picture where it's at. So when you take a big chest breath, it's going to push that diaphragm down to your stomach and make your tummy come out a little bit. So let's do a couple big deep breaths and just concentrate on those breaths. 
And um, that way we can practice this together. Okay, ready? Take a deep breath. Let it all the way out. Another deep breath. Down into the tummy. Breathe down to your tummy all the way back out. And it's best if you breathe it through your nose too. That helps your body come out of fight or flight. So let's do it again. Through the nose, into your chest. Just expand your chest as far as you can and then let it all the way back out. Ready? Nasal breathing. Nasal breathing is so important. That's a really good way to stop that trigger when you find when you find your the spark of something wants to fire you up and put you into that fight or flight where you buckle crazy trying to deal with something. Do that deep breathing. Do five deep breaths. The other one I love number two thought replacement. Okay, what is something really positive that you could say about yourself? Each of you just think about it, what that could be. It could be, I'm amazing. Even if you don't believe it, just 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 say it. Um, I am calm and I can handle any situation. That's another good thought. Okay, I would encourage you write down two or three of those and repeat them at least 10 times a day so that you can get them in your head. And so when a trigger happens, you right away say one of those quick things, those, those, those positive thoughts. Re replace the negative thought with a positive thought. No, that bill is not going to kill, kill me. I am able to handle anything, and I am so calm, and I am powerful, and I am amazing. You know, that's just, that's just, I'm putting a whole bunch together there. Thought replacement. Okay, pleasant memory recall. Think of the time in your life when you felt the most relaxed, the most loved and the most safe. Hopefully you have more than one memory, but can you think of a memory of that when you really felt safe, loved, and just happy? Okay, just freeze that snapshot in your mind. That's your happy place. That's where you want to go to when you have a trigger. Take your mind there and just sit and feel, not just think about that memory, feel it, and it will stop that stress response in your body. All right, this next one is what we're gonna do together. Okay, so get your hands out, get them ready. All right, okay, little kid glee. Okay, look at that picture right there, see that picture? Remember how our dads would throw us up in the air or maybe your uncle or maybe your mom tosses you in the air and catches you and the little kid usually laughs it just they just enjoy it. they totally trust their parent and it's so much fun it's like bah! or some people like to picture it as like um going on the roller coaster your arms are in the air you're screaming at the top of your lungs and having so much fun okay that's the that's the um yeah i see that right, waving your arms around around super duper um that is the trigger re disruptor that is the actually one of the best ways to stop a trigger response because what you're doing is you're taking your body and you're stopping the brain from doing its limbic lock thing you're stopping the brain from from doing its adrenal cycle a stress response cycle and you're like ah! if you can if you're not in public and you can make a noise do it and definitely smile while you do it just ah let's all do it together throw your arms in the air it really feels good actually <laughs> All right, so that's the that's the little kid glee. Now the other one is one that when you're feeling grumpy and mad, it's it's hard to do it, but it's really really good for changing your changing your state and getting yourself out of that triggered response. It's dancing, laughing, laughing. As someone who has this little Rudolph thing in their in their living room, and every once in a while they push the button and they they make themselves dance with Rudolph you know, singing to the song, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and they make themselves dance and, 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 and prance around because it changes, it literally changes your body and it stops the brain from continuing that adrenal stress response loop. It's transforming your stress into something productive. So the other one, that number six, is one that's really simple. It's one you can do in the, in the most public places and no one knows what you're doing. It's simply opening your hands. 
a lot of times when we get scared and we get stressed for any reason, we tend to tighten up all our muscles in our body, our heart and our, our, I mean, our mind gets tight because we're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying to avoid danger, avoid something that might hurt us. And just to open up and say, life is working for me. In your mind, just say, life is working for me even if you can't see it or understand what how it is just life is working for me that's one of the things you can do opening your hands and number seven is a really good one too i like this one so if your brains want to do that crazy scary chatter of everything's going wrong i'm going to be i'm doomed and and this is awful and i can't handle this start counting backwards from a hundred the first time you do it it's going to be kind of difficult i think unless you're a really number whiz but start at 100 and go backwards by increments of three. And it'll, it'll just totally change your, take you off that stressful thought. So those are some keys that will help you to disrupt the stress cycle from the mind end. And another, another mental, some other mental keys that I want to give you tonight. I want this to be something that you can take away with real tools to change your life. These are powerful things that won't you, I want to tell you something. You have got to be committed to yourself if you want to change your stress cycle. This is no quick fix. The biggest secret for health and stress transformation is there is no quick fix. Those who look for quick fixes are going to get more and more problems. That's the key. And the only quick fixes out there basically are cancer, I mean, our pill surgery, things that cause more problems. If you want real lasting change, you have to be committed to yourself to make it happen and to walk it out with your body and your mind and changing things and reprogramming. Your body was beautifully made by God to actually replace all its cells every, I think it's two or three years, it replaces all its cells. Your mind is totally plastic. There's so much science behind it. It's called the plasticity of the mind. Your mind can rewire and retrain so it no longer functions in a fight or flight state as a habit. It totally can, but it takes your commitment for you. There is no quick fix. There's no switch to, to flip. There's no therapy that will suddenly make you a, a better, healthier person. You have to walk it out. So I'm giving you tools right now to use your mind to change your life, but you just got to practice them. Do them over and over for days and months and years. Do them over and over until they become part of you. And watch how things start changing. Watch when you wake up in the morning calm, when you used to wake up stressed. I have one of the patients here. i got to tell you the story. It's so beautiful. And they came to us because they were dealing with stress and a variety of other health issues, which stress usually brings. And the one morning this patient got up and made his kids Mickey Mouse pancakes like, you know, little pancakes in the shape of Mickey Mouse. He had been wanting to do that for years, but he had been too stressed out to do it. And he got up and he was able to do that one morning. He finally had his a little, little dream come true for him. So watch for those positive changes and then just celebrate them with yourself, whether that's with a bottle of wine or whatever it is. Make yourself a celebration because that's a huge accomplishment because you're changing your physiology through your commitment to yourself. So mental habits to transform stress these are huge let's do this take a picture of this i want you to practice all these please practice these these are really 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 important for your mind and your body and your partner <laughs> and your family screenshot this right now and the first one is developing a growth mindset whenever something happens that doesn't feel good to you you know it could be anything. Tell yourself, instead of saying, I hate this, I don't want this, uh, this is nasty, life is never going to get better for me. Instead of saying that, say instead, what happens today is in my best interest. It is a chance to grow. Life is always working for me. Those are so powerful. I'm going to say it again. Anything that happens today is in my best interest. It's a chance to grow. Life is always working for me. And the more you say that, the more you're going to believe it, and the more you're actually going to see it in your life. I've proved this in my own life. Again, that's this whole seminar, people. 
is things that I've done in my life and have brought about huge change. People talk about how happy I am or how peaceful I am or how when I come around sometimes it makes them feel peaceful. Well, you know why that is? It's because I've been doing these things. So start working on it. You will do it. You'll be amazed at what this is going to do to you, to your relationships, to your health, everything. Number two, at the end of your day, in the beginning, it's just repeat 10 times the first one. You know, anything that happens today is in my best interest, and it's a chance to grow, and life is always working for me. At the end of the day, list the positives of the day. You know, things like, hey, I kept my stance solid for every shot, you know, if you're a basketball player, or even you can think of a shot in anything in, 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 in business or anything. You know, I caught myself wondering if I would be able to finish this this project, and I almost I started to talk myself out of it instead of listening to myself. You know, you're going to list what went well this day. You're going to list the things, even if they're small, what went well. I had an amazing dinner with my friend. I actually stayed calm when the doorbell went off in the middle of my favorite movie. I actually stayed calm. Um, you know, these are little celebrations. I woke up peaceful today. I chose to take deep breaths before I approached the firing line. I held my core stable and I kept clean lines in my shooting form. This is like, you know, for this is just some analogy, some, some, some sentences that might work for you, they've been for others, you know. It's all kinds of things that you can do. I held, I got three of my five projects done today. Yay! So I didn't get all five done. I could focus on that. That's what Waf, that's what Juanita used to do. I focused on the fact I didn't get all five done. No, no, no. I'm going to celebrate. I got three of them done. That's what went well today. Do that. Celebrate that and keep your mind set on that. those things that went well before you fall asleep. It's gratitude. Being grateful. The things you're grateful for. Um, ask yourself, and during the day, this is where it really, really rubber meets the road. Throughout the day, especially as you're starting to just try to figure out what your triggers are and how to stop them fast enough, make a habit every hour or two asking yourself, you know, what am I thinking right now? Just what's going on in my head behind, you know, the mind chatter that I'm not even conscious of. What am I thinking about right now? Um, what emotional state am I entertaining? Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I happy? Do I feel um, powerful or am I, am I frustrated? You know, what emotional state am I allowing right now? And what are my behaviors? You know, am I running, am I hiding from things that might trigger me? Am I avoiding things that might stretch me? You know, what are my behaviors? Am I acting in a fight or flight or freeze sort of way? Or am I ha acting in a powerful um positive sort of way and it all then the big big question is to ask this is the this is the most important one of the four is are these thought states and behaviors feeding my stress recovery or feeding the fight flight or freeze in my body which one's it feeding? Every day you will take a step forward or a step backward, and it's your choice. And like I said, it all comes down to commitment to yourself and to, to walking yourself forward. All right. So now we're gonna, we talked about how to, how to stop the stress response from the brain side and to help, help work, the, work it downward and heal the body with the brain. Now we're gonna go the up, other way. And just to review again, um, da -da -da -da, back here to my cool little happy juices. Your gut and your body is paramount of importance for your brain to survive and to function well. So we're going to talk, talk about how stress affects, you know, how it work, works in your body and then how that affects the brain, change that cycle. Oops, too far. Okay, so yeah, there is a gut-brain connection. Your immune system is actually comp um, compromised by many things, and they are stressors to your gut. They're stressors to your whole body because your gut feeds your whole body and produces a lot of the hormones for your body. So 
when you have stressors coming into your immune system, which is your intest largely your intestinal system, digestive tract, and includes other organs as well, those the immune system is compromised by things like medications, painkillers, toxins, antibiotics, mental stress, we talked about that one, and viruses. Those are just a few. And one of the big ones that we're seeing more and more and more is mold. Most of us have had mold exposure, and we don't know unless we test how much that is still resident in our bodies. It doesn't come out with regular detoxes. It absolutely doesn't. A huge, huge stressor to the whole entire body, and particularly the brain. Um, it's one of those toxins that will, will just cut your healing short on every level if you don't get the mold out. Um, but your immune system is being, is being attacked with these are being stressed, I should say, with these items. And, you know, even the things we put on our skin and, and things we breathe, all these things are stressing our immune system. So we got to find out how do we protect the immune system? How do we support the immune system so that it can feed the brain and create a healthy cycle, a productive, powerful, positive cycle in our bodies so that we're not feeling stressed, even if it's stressful around. Have you ever seen that person who's happy no matter what's happening out there? The person who's, who's happy even in the most stressful situation? I remember one situation that happened to me. I, I, was, I was kind of freezing a little bit. I, it was like, it to me was, was the recipe for disaster. We actually had to call the police because of, of what was going on. And one of my colleagues was standing beside me and he actually started laughing. He's like, yeah, I love it when these kind of things happen. I mean, something good is going to happen soon. I, I just, I'm like, oh, 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 that's a positive way of looking at the situation, not the negative way I was looking at it. So I don't know where I was going with all that, but that's just another little technique there, the, the power or an example of the reality of the power of our thoughts. So we want to protect our immune system and our body so it can feed that brain well and keep that happy cycle going on, that positive cycle, that healthy um, healing cycle going on rather than the opposite, which is an adrenal fight or flight down, down, down into a, a state where you almost can't get out of it. So how do we protect the gut? How do we reverse the damage? that the stressors have done to the gut and the stressors the gut has faced? Well, first of all, we have to identify what those stressors are. And the only way to do it is testing. You really can't guess. A lot of physicians today will guess based on symptoms. Symptoms are only like the tip of the iceberg. You gotta test to see what's under the water, to see what's going on in the rest of the iceberg in order to really know what the stressors are. If you just go by symptoms, the person's never gonna get well, honestly. And it's, it happens over and over. I see patients coming in, they've been to every doctor under the sun, including Mayo, and they still haven't found the answers because all they've been dealing with is symptoms. You gotta get down to a root cause. That's another secret that we have here in health transformation um, and stress transformation is you gotta get to root cause. You, you test, you test. And you gotta have someone that knows what, the, what to even test. And that's Dr. Legree, that's where he changed my life. Oh my word, that's one of the ways he changed my life. He knew what to test. And when those results came back, oh my word, they were true. Because when I started doing number two, and he showed me how to remove the interference to my body's innate ability to heal itself, my life began to change instantly. I, I was so tired before those test results came back that I couldn't even hardly make a meal or wash my dishes that night because I was just too tired. Within a month and a half after following his recommendations to remove the interference, like it says, to remove the interference to the body's innate ability to heal itself. God made your body heal to heal itself. When he showed me how, within a month and a half, I was working out at the gym again. And then the third is to even go, just you start, re, you start removing that interference. You start killing the infections. You remove the more.
that and then you rebuilding the body you get again you get the energy and you get the hair to grow again i didn't have much hair when i was sick i was falling out all the time you get all of that because you rebuild your body and it's not through putting more chemicals into your body which are actually toxins it's not through medication it's through using the thing that your body recognizes as support and health it's nutrition it's using supplements and it's using the right ones and the right quantities and that's where dr Legree is an expert at so I want to, again, this is, I want this webinar to empower you in and of itself, but I also want, if you choose to have us support you on this healing journey you're on, some of you on this webinar have already chosen that, and we're walking through that process of these three steps right now, and I congratulate you for taking that step because you're humanity and your body seriously and your health and your future seriously and we're going to continue this journey with you with everything we've got inside of us dr jeff and i are passionate about this and we want to help you guys heal yourselves but for the rest of you i want to give you two offers two things that may you, you may choose that will help you to i believe powerfully support you to move forward on your healing journey at a much faster rate because we tried so many things. Dr. Jeff and I, myself, each have, have tried out so many things and we find the best things that work and those are the things we bring to you. So, but before we get into those, those two offers, I wanted to go over this. You know, what I want you to just think again, I want you to answer these questions for yourself because this is, this is the implementation time. This is where I want you to implement these strategies into your life. But first ask yourself the question, my stress me from doing you know whether it's specifically completely or partially you know what are some of the things that my stress okay is the screen back on here it says that some people say it's freezing is it is it working again yep okay sorry about that yeah you know how internet is comes and goes a little bit but we're back on right everybody can hear me okay cool so what are the things that your stress is preventing you from what are the things that you would do more freely that you would enjoy more fully if you didn't have stress. Okay. How is stress of interfering with your daily life? Is it hard to get up? Is it hard to get ready for working time? Is it hard to deal with your kids? with your daily yeah interacting with people more yeah with COVID yeah stress is it yeah I totally I get it I totally get it what would it mean to you if you had no more stress now obviously we're not going to change the whole world with COVID and all that but if you didn't have stress inside if you knew that you were rock solid and and this world was a good place even with COVID and you had a happy, you had a peaceful body and a peaceful mind. What would that mean to you? Do you think you'd be more creative in ways to get together with people and interact with them? Do you think maybe you'd have less fear in relating with them? No different if you asked about the whole COVID thing on the with the um, in the questions. And I I I get it. That's an honest question. It's a real reality question for us. Oh my word. Yeah, your life would be better. And what would that mean to you? What price tag could you put on? What value in your heart would you put on having a better social life and a healthy interactions with people? Having a freer life with less stress. It would mean a lot. It meant a lot to me when my stress went down. I felt like I had a whole new life. Priceless, exactly. One of you said priceless. Yes, I agree. I don't know what price I put on it. To me, I would spend every dollar just to feel better, just to feel more like me, just to be able to enjoy my world more. I would spend every dollar just to do that. So there was no price. Yeah, I agree. Good answers. Okay, so the, 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 I just want to stress again, and I think you all know this already, stress is extremely serious. And if you, today you're on this webinar and you have the choice to either 
do something about your stress because now you have tools or to walk away and do nothing. And if you walk away and do nothing, that snowball will keep growing. And one day it will run you over. I can promise you that. That's the only guarantee I can give you. Stress is like a snowball. But if you choose to step out of the way of that snowball and learn to walk in a different direction, that snowball can go rolling on its way and, and you have a, a happier life. So um, one more little quick tip yet. I told you this, this webinar is packed. I, each of these, almost each of these slides, I could talk a whole webinar on each one. This one, body, soul, and spirit gets me so excited. And I want you to know that you're going to use all three to reverse stress. You, God created every human being with a body, soul, and spirit. And you, to use the whole you to the fullest, and you have to use the whole you to reverse the cycle because it incorporates the whole you. So spirit. The part of the spirit that you will do is changing your beliefs. That's your belief center. Your spirit is. Change your beliefs about yourself, your circumstances, and your world. That's how you use your spirit to reverse and to transform stress. Your soul, that's the part of you that chooses and feels emotions. You're going to make choices now that are congruent with recovery and with health. No longer, you're, gonna, you're not going to keep making choices that are congruent with fight, flight, or freeze and with life being chaotic and, and crazy. You're going to start making choices with life being congruent with recovery and health. And then your body, you're going to, I encourage you, I hope each of you, if you haven't done it already, is going to choose to do testing and to rebuild your body from the effects of stress so that it can handle stress in the future without making you feel sick and making you feel crazy. Rebuilding your body into this amazing machine it was meant to be. So that's your body, soul, and spirit little packet right there that you're, you were born with, and I'm just showing you now how it affects you, how you can use it to, to reverse and to transform your stress. All right, so the first offer I have for you is something that's very brand new. None of our patients have heard this. You on this call are the first ones. We've been working on this for about six months, and we're finally rolling it out. This is our From Stress to Happiness Club. And the, the membership is going to be a monthly membership. You can stay in as long or as short as you want. You can join for one month. Or you can join for a year. It doesn't matter. It's $500 a month, and what that's going to get you is an hour-long session with Dr. Legree or myself where we're going to just focus on you and on what triggers you're feeling, helping you replace them, helping you come up with powerful statements to say instead of those triggers, helping you figure out how to deal with your life and to help you reverse that damage from a mindset standpoint. That's that hour. You get one hour a month that you're going to have with us focused attention. And then you're also going to have membership in the all new, it's brand new, never been, nobody else is, and only members of the Stress to Happiness Club will be in this group. This is going to be a page, a private Facebook page, you will be given access to that, where you will receive daily encouragement, um, homework assignments, educational videos done by Dr. Legree and myself, helping you continue to grow in your understanding of stress and of how to reverse it from all different angles, lifestyle changes, um, diet changes, whatever. All, I mean, it's going to be huge, huge, huge educationally. That group is going to do more for your life than anything. It's going to be powerful, powerful. And you will receive five weekdays. You'll receive one each weekday into that group. There'll be an input into that group for you. And so that's going to be hugely powerful. It's only $500 a month, and it's going to change your life. So I want to encourage you to take – I'm going to put the links um, – let me see. I think I can do that right now. I'm going to put the link for that one into the, fa into the chat here. You will also get the links on um, your replay. I'll be sending you an email with a replay link, but I want to put that into the chat right now if I can get my little technology here together. Just a second. Okay, in case anybody want to, if in case you want to be the very first one to jump onto that thing. Oh. Okay. 
I can, I'll replay. send it to you guys. Replay. Yeah, I'll send it to you in a replay. Sorry, not sure how to do this to get this to you easily right now. I'll send it to you these links, this link in the replay. So that way you can email. sign them. It'll be in an email. It'll come out, come either tonight or tomorrow morning. So, okay. And then the next one is if, and again, some of you are patients here already and have done this particular one, but for the others of you, I want to offer you to, to the first offer was to change the stress from your mind down. This one is to change the stress from your body up. And you really need both to radically change your, your interaction with stress. So this is actually the body transformation ticket. And you each get a ticket if you would like. It's going to be a free. This is a $430, $35 value pa uh, package right here. And you're going to get it free just for taking the time to be on this webinar tonight. And I truly appreciate you being here and taking the time for yourself and to hear this. So you will receive in this, and again, this link I'll put onto the, um, it's called a discovery call. You'll see that link in that email that I'll be sending you. You will receive a new patient evaluation by Dr. Jeff Legree. You will also receive a detailed case history that he will do with you. He's gonna dig far deeper and connect a lot of dots that you have not realized are connected with your stress levels in your body and with what's going on in your body. He just connects those dots. And it's just absolutely amazing how, how, why what's happening in your body is happening. He'll present you with a report of findings as well as a personalized care plan. Each person's different. Each person needs different testing. Each person needs different coaching. And so he'll put together a package just for you. But like I said, normally to go through that process, which is usually a two visit process, um, he normally it's 435. But tonight we're giving it to you for free. So I encourage all of you who haven't done this process already to do that and to get your hands on your own personalized care plan and then to walk forward with a rebuild in your own body. So, all right, let me see. I think that's my last slide. Yep, okay. So let me just look real quickly. I've got a couple questions here some people asked, and I believe I answered most of them through the content of the webinar, but I want to make sure I got, got them all. Um, Okay, people are asking about breath, breathing. Yep, we covered that. How to cope holistically through this pandemic. Yeah, honestly, the, the best way is two things. is by dealing with the mind and the body. The mind, you've got to change your thinking about it. And you got to change your thinking about your environment and about your power and ability to face the environment. So that's from the top down. And then from the bottom up, you've got to protect your body through your strong immune system. And the only way to do that is testing and making sure that immune system is strong and removing the obstacles to the strength of it. Because most of us have damaged immune systems. And until we test, we don't really know where that damage is at. So you've got to do it from the both top and the bottom. When you have that, you can be like, I, I honestly am not afraid to go out into anywhere because my immune system is so rock solid. I'm, I'm, I, I, I just, I'm not even afraid of getting COVID. I don't even think of it as a possibility because I'm so, my immune system is so strong and my thinking, I'm not fearful of it. I'm not anticipating. Fear is the biggest thing that weakens your immune system. So it's working it from the top down and the bottom up to strengthen yourself, to deal holistically with the pandemic. Very good question. Um, how to cope with stress and anxiety at work during the pandemic? I would say the same thing, the very same answer. And to set boundaries, yeah, all of us, that's all all part of mindset training. There's times we have to set boundaries um, in our lives and it definitely can be can be beneficial, especially for a time when we're going through recovery. But um, the biggest thing is dealing with the mind and the body and making sure you're rock solid. Okay, I'm just looking quickly down through better sleep and weight loss. Oh my word, I did not touch on, I touched on the sleep thing. Bad sleep, lack of sleep, waking up all the time, waking up tired in the morning, all of those are symptoms of adrenal fatigue and a body that's just stressed out. It really is. But the weight loss thing, that is also a sign, the, the, the inability to lose weight, the, the weight that's stuck at a number you don't want it to be stuck at, that is also a sign of stress in the body because the body has been stressed to a point that it's locked itself and it's protecting itself from something. And we got to find out what that something is Move it out of the way, and then you can go forward and meet, meet your weight loss goal. I did. 
I'm back to my age 20, actually my age 16 weight, and I feel super great. I didn't think it was possible, but it is when you deal with the root cause. All right, and one question too, can this come on suddenly? Um, I would say stress issues, yes, they can come, over, come on overnight from a traumatic you know, situation or something, but more often than not, stress is something that grows on you. It grows in its, it's a, it's a cumulative damage in the body to the point where you see it you know the, the 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 point it feels sudden because all of a sudden it manifests in the cancer or in i just can't think anymore or i can't handle life anymore and it feels sudden overnight but it actually has been growing for years like every disease is it's growing silently and we don't realize it because our body does its best to camouflage things for us so we can keep functioning but you no know, stress more often than and not has being internally. And that's where we have to do the unwinding of both the brain and the body to unwind the damage and restore it to full function. All right, I think that covers it all. Oh, diabetes, neuropathy, pain. Yeah, all of those things like we talked about joint issues and any organ function. Diabetes, I think I answered that in there too. The whole glucose dump into the bloodstream spikes diabetes, absolutely spikes diabetes. And then the, the whole breakdown of the nerves, the burning out of the nerves, that all comes from inflammation. Inflammation is stress in the body. We've got to find out where that inflammation is residing, where it's coming from, and we've got to remove the cause, and then your body can return to health. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for joining us tonight. You've been a blessing. And if you have more questions, I believe you have our contact information. I will be sending you an email to, um, tonight or to us of the info, the replay links, and you can reach out to us at any time. We are here to support you on this journey and to help you to move forward in any way we can. God bless and have a beautiful evening.